Hello, greetings and salutations, YouTubers and peeps and groovers. This is Take the Fear Out the Gear, and I'm Jason Bangers. And I'm Chumley Warner. Today we're having a look at the Yamaha A3000. So what it is, is Simon's done enough of repair, haven't you, Simon? Well, it's, it's quite a good one, because on these Yamaha A3000s, this is one of the things that always goes wrong. Common fault which is what this channel's about it's about taking fear out of the gear the gear that's wonky exactly 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 and it's the uh it's if you look at the front of it it's got four or five encoders along the front and they always just wear out so when you turn it your values on your screen don't work and we found a good uh, replacement for what was in there originally yeah just before just to let you know the difference between a potentiometer and, and, and an encoder is in a potentiometer just like a volume a yeah. switch or a, or a mid sweep or a, or an EQ thing. It's it's not like an encoder. An encoder is a, a button that changes digital stuff. I'm guessing, yeah. Well, yeah. encoders you just keep on turning them. Left There's and no right. no beginning or end, is it? No, there? no, there isn't. No. But yeah, what are the ones that the encoders? They are called encoders on that A3000. Is that correct? Yeah, and the original Yamaha ones they were made by Alps, ah. and we've managed to source an equivalent Alps new version. Well, that's cool, man. Uh, some people have used these other ones called Bourne's Pots. Uh, yeah, they work fine, but the uh, the black knobs that fit on top don't fit that well, but the Alps ones do. So, so this, this is great advice, yeah. because if you did not know, if you knew you needed an encoder, you would never have thought about Alps unless you knew them. Encoders were made by Alps, would you? It's, so. it's, it's always difficult trying to source new versions of old parts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, with no further ado needed, here's the video. Right, welcome back to the workshop. Got something a little bit different because we've featured a lot of Akai samplers, but this is actually a Yamaha A3000 sampler. Uh, I bought this one as like a spares repairs unit, although uh, it does work. It's got, uh, I think it's got a hard drive in it, we'll have a look in a bit. And the, the main thing with this one is uh, it's had an encoder replaced here, so this encoder works fine, but all the other encoders which is a common fault with these uh, they work now and again they're a bit intermittent so what we're going to do is we're going to take the encoder board out and replace them with some new encoders and uh, I'm going to use some Alps encoders which is the same as the previous owner replaced for this one so they'll all be the same okay so what screws do we need to take out uh, well looking at the top here we've got one two three and round the back there's five round the back and then on each side if we flip this up this way like that you can probably see on each side you've got one two three here and if we go up the top one two three what you'll notice is Obviously, someone's had this apart before to change the encoder. Uh, all the screw, virtually all the screws are missing. So what I've managed to do, I found some on eBay, and I'll read it out anyway. Uh, we'll put the link in the description. So these are M3 times eight, sort of self-tapping screws. Tried one just to see if they fit, and they seem to they seem to fit perfectly. So when we put this back together, we can have all the screws back. So I've also noticed there's like one, two, three missing here off the faceplate as well. So there's a whole pile missing. So if you've got a similar thing with yours, these screws will be handy. Okie doke, well I'll uh, take what screws there are out and we'll take the lid off, then we'll have a look. Okay, so there's actually only three screws holding the lid on. That's how many are missing. So here we've got the main board. Got the power supply over here. This is the SCSI card, which is most important. You really need a SCSI card with these so you can plug in a CD-ROM, possibly an extra hard drive. Uh, this one's actually got an internal SCSI hard drive. Uh, it looks like it's 2.1 gig, so that's in there. And then you've got the floppy drive over on this side. Down here, you've got uh, four memory slots. I've had a quick look, I think there's two 4 meg, and I'm not sure what the other ones are. I'd have to look up the reference numbers on those. But to get to the encoders which are sort of here 
I'll spin it round and then we'll just have to take the front off and then we should be able to see them. Right, so we've spun the sample around. Obviously, before you take this faceplate off, you need to uh, take the knobs off the five encoders and there's these two knobs here. And then because this has got no screws in, this is loose already. Normally you'd have to take some screws out. So if I just take that out, lay that there. One thing to take into account, we'll zoom in a bit in a minute, but here, these are like little switch caps. And what I'd recommend is just take them off, put them safely to one side, then you won't lose them. Because I'll let you into a secret, I have looked at this before, I dropped a couple of these on the floor and it was just so lucky that I found them all. So definitely if you're working on these machines, take them off, put them to one side and that's, that's, a, that's a good tip. Right, so we'll zoom in on this and we'll have a closer look. So this is the encoder board and Yamaha originally used all ALPS encoders. ALPS are like a really good make. They make potentiometers, encoders, all kinds of things. Very good quality. So this is the four originals. This is the one that has been put in. Obviously this one works fine. These four here are a bit intermittent. So I think what we need to do roughly, I think there's one, two, three, four screws. We just need to take those out and then just undo the connector there and the connector here. And then we should be able to get to that board. Right, so here's the encoder board. So yeah, there was one, two, three, four screws there and just carefully undo the connectors each side. Uh, the uh, shaft is a tiny bit longer, but it doesn't, doesn't affect anything because they're the actual Yamaha caps fit really well. So that's, that's really good. They, they fit fine because on various forums and that, people have, instead of using Alps pots, they've used... Uh, Bourne's pots uh, they're, they're really good uh, but there's a few people have said the actual caps don't fit very well on the Bourne's pots so I, I would go for this Alps pot as a better solution right turn the encoder board around and this is the pot that was replaced uh, by the previous owner or an engineer and unfortunately it was it was done really badly not not, not very good soldering and I have looked at this board earlier when I was inspecting to see what encoders it was using etc and because of the bad solder and it's damaged some of the track so what I've had to do is I've had to do a couple of jumper wires to the connector on the side there that works perfectly so obviously I'm, I'm going to do the soldering on these four you need to be very careful make sure you don't damage the tracks all right so we've got got two encoders out so far so this is this is a good way to do it what you want to do, make sure your soldering iron's clean, put some solder on your iron and then just melt the solder that's already there and put some new on as well. So like that. And then on that one as well. There we go. And then you've got these three little, they're the three parts of the encoder so just a tiny bit of solder tiny bit of solder tiny bit of solder same on the other side which will be these two here just the just the it's called wetting them up and it just helps to make the old solder flow so this is a solder solder sucker so on these big blobs here put your iron on Get it heated up, and you can see that's taken off a whole load of solder. Try one of these. So this is the uh, one of the. So heat it up. And I don't know if you can see that, but that's taken all the solder out of that hole. So what I'll do is I'll do the same with that one and the other three, and you'll get this very neat desoldering and once you've got the solder off like these two and there what I've done is and got as much solder off these two as possible 
you can then sort of hold the encoder from the back and then just gently melt the solder and just pull that on one side, the other side and that will come out. So there we have it. Those four came out really quite easily. But as I said, you must must have a solder sucker. Right, well that's that's all the new encoders positioned in place. And it's an old one. So you can see the two lugs there. On the new encoders you have to bend them in a little bit. Then carefully push them in and they'll clip in. So all we need to do now is turn it over and then we can just dab some solder on all of the terminals. So there we go, nice neat piece of soldering. So what we'll do now is, just turn that over, so they're all on. Uh, we'll connect it back into the front of the sampler. Okay, well I'll just slip the front on. And let's just have a look. So this is uh, the first one, that's what it says on config, so if we just... There we go, perfect, wave, back to config. And obviously left is there, so loop wave mode loop and then we should better go back yeah now let's try this one number two it says unlock lock unlock perfect this one says zero off zero on and backwards zero off nice snap off snap on let's have a look on off really really they work perfectly and this is the original one which had to have the uh, the uh, jumper wires so in type length time beat graph and then back yeah that's pretty good and obviously these encoders uh, apart from turning left and right you push them and they've got a built-in switch so if we press let's try pressing load so if I press it in gently there you go, so that's working as well. We'll get all the knobs and everything back on and we'll just see if there's anything else that needs doing. Well, those screws were great, so we've, we've got a full complement of screws. So nothing's loose anymore, switch it on. Oh yeah, by the way, this, is, uh, this has got version 2 of the software installed, which is an upgrade on the original version 1. So there we go, so we've got some uh, brand new Alps pots in which is what we want which I just like that's fine as well which is as close to the originals as we can get here's the originals there keeping those labeled them up Yamaha A3000 because you can actually if you're careful you can take them apart and give them a good clean of isopropanol so just in case I need some more spares but there we go. All the encoders are working properly and all the boxes screwed together properly. Back to the studio. Who's a clever boy then Mr Chumley? Done it again brother. <laughs> High five. High five. So there you go and that's what you do. That's, oh. what, that's what you do. And, and you're bound to have that trouble if you've got an A3000. And I think there's, uh, there's some other models, the A4000, 5000, I think they all use the same encoders. So you can, you can, there you, go, you yeah. know, you, you can do it on all those samplers. That's today's tip for all you A3000 owners. And we'll do your review at some point. Yeah, where we'll, we we'll have it on the table and we'll go through the whole thing because it's quite a fun sample, that one. We just want to get back to doing demos on the table for you, which we haven't been able to do yet. I'm sorry we just haven't had time, but we will. We yep. certainly will. We're we can't wait, can we? No, no, no. We try and maybe next week we'll get you one on the go absolutely because we think of you all the time tubes in fact we never stop thinking of you do we so we just, we just don't stop thinking about our tubes do we no we appreciate all your support and everything we love you so don't forget to hit that bell and subscribe and there's a little button called like that'd be handy it helps the channel uh, immensely we will see you on the very next video which will be next tuesday hopefully all being very well bye for now